Morning, boys and girls. It's Johnny Van. Thank God I'm back. I'm here today because I'm going to be replacing the time and chain tensioners in my wife's 2002 Ford Explorer. She's got 245,000 miles, but it's a well-maintained vehicle and she runs great. It's got a 4.0 in it, of course, four-wheel drive. Uh, and what I know of 4.0s, even though they have changed over the years externally and, you know, uh, top end wise and things like that is four O's are beasts, baby. I'm a Chevy guy when it comes to style, so forgive me. But I own two Fords, y'all. That that's my lineup in my driveway right now, um, because of reliability. I'm a Caprice dude. I love old square bodies. I love uh, '60s Chevy trucks, '50s GM cars. Um, but I understand the reliability that Ford has achieved uh, in both my vehicles out there. My 4.0 uh, in that Explorer. And I had another Explorer many years ago. I had 375,000 miles on that 4.0. The first, I can't remember what year that truck was the first, when they switched to roller top end. Um, 375,000 miles on that thing and it ran like a champ. So I want to keep this thing running. I, I'm not going to just uh, let her go. I've seen a lot of reliability out of Fords, but the last thing I want to happen is the guides to break off. If you have a time and chain noise, which almost sounds like take a Bic lighter and rub it across the top of a bicycle chain real fast. If that's a sound you got going on under your hood, it's time for you to change your time and chain tensioner. Or else you'll be... You'll be done if you're a cheapo like me and you're not going to do a big job like that or pay for a big job like that to be done. That truck is junk if you don't do this. This is preventative maintenance. It's going to run you about 75 bucks for the front and back from Rock Auto. Part numbers 9-5586 and 9-5587. That's with shipping. Get those on Rock Auto. It's probably as cheap as you're going to find them. I don't know. Maybe you can get them somewhere else. I've never done this job before. But you guys know that I think I got it. I can handle it. What I'm going to try to achieve when I go out here to this truck, though, for you, is I'm going to try to use my knowledge and my expertise, 20-plus years of being a mechanic, a uh, diesel technician, owning a salvage yard and a repair shop. I'm going to try to use that knowledge to figure out the easiest way for you to attack this job but you do not need to take a wheel off my wheels are just turned that's it they're down no jacks no nothing and of course that's going to look different for every model truck but these tensioners work for i want to say that this generation of my sport 2001 to 05 and then also the Maybe a 01 to 10 Rangers and Mazda, uh, the, the B4000s. I mean, these, these trucks speak volumes to reliability. Take the time and the money and the effort to maintain this vehicle. It will last you a long time. As I said, 245,000 miles on my wife's truck. Go back to Ford Reliability. About the same amount of mileage on my 07 Ford Focus. With a 2.0, I'm telling you, that car is a beast. Anyway, so, oh, also, uh, Mountaineer. It, it, this should be about the same setup for the same year as Mountaineers. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to go out here. I'm going to cut in and out, edit here and there, and show you the quickest and easiest way to change these out. There shouldn't be any specialty tools required. Uh, it, it, I'm going to try to use the cheapest tools I have, um, so that you're not in a spot, uh, where you're trying to borrow tools, but remember you can always purchase tools from the big chain auto stores and return them when you're done. And that's, they allow that. It's a, it's a rental thing. As long as you pay the full price, you can bring it back 
and boom. Uh, so hopefully, if if you're in a spot, you don't have some of the tools that I have, that that can uh, help you out greatly. So I'm gonna get to the job. I'll see you guys outside and under the hood. Stay tuned. All right. Let's see if you can see me now. From what I've understood in uh, looking at this job and other people's perspectives, the uh, the hardest thing is accessing both of the tensioners and loosening them. Step one, go to the store and get yourself a beer or a cigar or a lemonade, whatever you'd like. A snack, a bag of pork rinds, if you will. Go get yourself whatever you want. The only purpose in this trip is to get this engine hot. Steel and aluminum in some cases tend to, to seize up, but a good hot engine is the way to go. So get yourself your tools ready, which you're going to need to do the job on this one, and I'll show you pictures, to loosen both of them. That is step one. Get this engine hot. And loosen it and then you're going to let it cool down you'll want a 27 millimeter deep well socket for the one on the back and then you will need a 27 millimeter wrench or an adjustable wrench for the one on the front that's how you're going to loosen it. so you don't need to take this front wheel off or anything I've gotten both of mine loose I went to the store Engine got hot, came out in a few minutes after that, and I knocked them loose real quick. I'm able to get my arm down here, pass my socket down, finagle my wrench around, and get it on there. Reach my second arm down through. Now, depending on your intake setup, you might have to remove a rubber or a thing or two here and there to get to it. But you don't need to take the wheel off. All you need to do is break it loose. That's all I did. I broke it loose. Now she's loose. Second one over here. Right there. That's it. Broke that loose. I'm going to walk away. Let the engine cool down. So here she is a good ways out. Now I'm not stuck yet. I think it's going to come all the way out. Now, just to fill you in, uh, I haven't done nothing in between, but just grabbed a hold of this thing with my hand, actually a towel because my fingers are weak uh, from a lot of wrench turning, and that helped me get a grip, and just kept on spinning it. Um, and on this model, I might end up running into this uh, coolant temperature sensor right here. If you end up having to remove that, or anything for that matter. Do me a favor. Turn your phone on. Snap a picture. Uh, snap a picture of anything and everything you take apart. If you're not comfortable putting it back together later. You never know if something in life pulls you away. And you have to leave something apart for a while. If you have pictures on your phone from every angle of everything. From way up here. To this angle, that angle, and otherwise, then you can reference those to put them back together. As far as electrical plugs are concerned, most of them uh, only fit in one spot, so you don't have to worry about that too much. But you do want to watch. You don't want to end up binding these wires crazy. They've sat here forever. You know, this truck is almost 20 years old, and they've sat in that position and been heated and cooled. And uh, I imagine a lot of wires are brittle from uh from all that so i think i'm gonna see if i can hold this now and spin this out and we'll see what we run into i'm holding my phone in one hand and spinning it out in the other let's see where we're at we're almost into that sensor and we might end up having to remove it uh to, to make it out the hole but i don't know all right, I know that my threads are out because I just felt it push back against me. No, I'm going to be able to pull out all the way. Let's see. Boom, I'm out. 
there you are boys and girls we're out without removing anything on this o2 model now i believe some of the o1s have the intake and everything that comes out here and you might end up having to disconnect the hose or anything like that if you do do that again take pictures make sure you're cooled down make sure you have a pan underneath to catch the coolant uh and the the time intention boo the time and tensioner on the back side you might want to put a pan down there to catch oil nothing's going to come out the top one here though um make sure nothing drops down in there you know in between now and when you put the new one in and be sure that the metal gasket that comes with your new one that sits right there is off and out of the way um let me also add while you're doing this job just something for you to think about that see that small hole here at the threads inside the big hole is a small hole and what that does is that sends oil up to let's move this into the light into can you see that oh that small hole right there so you want good oil flow and good oil good oil pressure all of these things in order for these to work properly um, because they fill up with oil and this one don't even feel that bad uh, I believe most of my noise is from the back but why not do them both when you're doing them keep a good oil filter and good oil in, in your truck that's what you want uh, a motorcraft oil filter is designed for this engine why not use it and some decent oil I think the filter is actually more important than the oil but uh, I'll come back in a few with the next step I'm gonna go ahead and get this ready and put the new one back in all right so here we are I took uh, a towel and wiped that surface down you want to be able to you know to get a good seal around there with this crushed sleeve sort of gasket um, and the old one actually wasn't uh, stuck to the aluminum there. It was and is right there. You can kind of see it. Um, so just make sure you have that off. You don't want two of them on there. You're not going to get a good seal. Uh, we're going to go ahead and find our new one. And see if we can do this with two hands. Pop that on there, slide it on down nice and easy, hold it in place, stick it in, and get it started. You're going to have to push the tension of the spring down to start these threads. The chances of you cross starting it are pretty slim, but I guess it could occur, and you're going to want to press and turn and get a thread to grab once it grabs it's going to stay i got one did i just pressed in and turn if it pop back out go at it again now i got it to bite should be nice and simple to run it in by hand it's going to be tight though because of spring tension like i said make sure that little gasket stays kind of loose and sits flat when you run it in I want to go back to this real quick. If you have to remove this coolant sensor, it doesn't screw out. There's a little pin back here, a little clip. You pull your wire off. Let's do it for fun. Push the tab, pull your wire off. And then see that right here. Pop that that way, and that'll pull right out. And it pops back in, and the clip goes back on. It's pretty self-explanatory. But in my case, I didn't have to. So... I'm going to run it in, and I'm going to tighten it to hell with a wrench. Uh, you want it tight. That's it. All the way down, as tight as it'll go. Um, you know, don't kill yourself, but, but put it on tight as hell. That's, I, I know that there's a torque specification for these things, but that's a, a giant piece of metal. You're not going to over-torque it for the most part. <laughs> run it in there and get it as tight as you can get it. We'll be back with the, the rear one in a minute. All right, tensioner number two, and I will show some pictures to get a better idea about where it's at, but as as far as the reference goes, 
if you've ever put spark plugs in your truck or wires, passenger side, rear spark plug, last one farthest to the back, you're going to go, you know, maybe uh, three, four inches back. Um, to the rear of the engine from there and you'll find that big bolt. So there's that last spark plug from there. You're just going to go back about three inches and you'll find that bolt. Like I said, you can get to it all from here. I can reach all that. So we're going to slide this oil pan under the truck. Just catch anything. Check it from the top. Make sure it's in the right spot. We've already got her loose, so we're going to reach up in there and get her the rest of the way. Same thing. Look, I'm touching it right there. That's where she's at. So I'm going to run her out just like I ran out the other one. Might have to use the socket a little bit just to help me out. Pop the new one back in, and that'll be the end of it. I'll get back with you in a second. So there we are, she's out, I wiped it down. Enough oil came out to, you know, cover my hand and cover this. I didn't even really need the pan, but I put it there anyway. This is definitely my bad one, though you can feel it has tension on it. It didn't push back against me and make it tight. It came out easy as pie the whole way. So I know it didn't have the tension that it really needs to, to keep that chain tight. Um, make sure that the old gasket is on there, you can feel it. Rub your thumb or your finger across it, and you can feel that little ledge right there. See it? As long as that's on there, you know you're good. Put your new one on your new tensioner. Reach down and, and put it back in. I was able to access mine simply by going this route all the way down, back behind here, about elbow deep in, and I can feel everything. And you don't need to see it search for that plug wire and then move over three inches and you find it. I'm going to reach down there, clean it up with a towel, put the new one back in, same way. Run it as tight as I can get it with my hand and then grab my ratchet, put my deep well 27 and crank her down tight and that'll be it. After that, I just need to start it up and uh, it's going to rattle for a second at first until the oil gets into those ports. That little hole there and pumps up the tensioner. Now it's got spring tension though, so it's not gonna, don't let any noise scare you at first. Uh, you know, it has tension. It's it's not like I can really push that in all the way. It's, you know, you'll be all right. That'll be it. Easy peasy. Total time, I mean, excluding me trying to get my camera going and wiping my hands off so I could touch my phone again. I could do this job Easy in less than a half hour, we're drinking a cup of coffee on this particular truck. Again, on some other models, you'll be moving other things here and there, uh, and that might make it tougher. But you do not need to take a wheel off. My wheels are just turned. That's it. They're down. No jacks. No nothing. That's it. Don't go through all that work for nothing. It's easy peasy. I'm going to pop the new one back in. Alright. I got her hand tight, just like I told you. Uh, to get my hand to it, rather than when I'm getting my ratchet to it, I'm coming behind this, uh, you know, this, this piston here. Um, when I get my hand to it, I'm going over top of it. I'm coming down. I had to do the same thing as I did on the top, where I had to push. Uh... Now, if, you're, if your hand isn't strong enough to push the spring tension to get it to grab, you might want to use another hand if you can. You can even come to the back and push on your other hand just to give you a little boost. Um, beyond that, if, if you can't do it, maybe try to grab a buddy that's a little stronger that's got some hand strength. I don't have much, so I can't imagine it'd be too bad. These hands are pretty beat up. Um, but that's it. I ran it in hand tight. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fish my ratchet myself. I lost my socket. That might be the hardest part of the job. But this is how you know 
This ain't a bad. I didn't even have to take my rings off. Normally, the only fight that uh, that you take your rings off for is the fight with a car. Get this to tighten. There we are. Now that I got it seated properly, it ain't going to fall off. Pretty much, put your handle down first, grab the ratchet, reach down, put it right there. You can see that bolt from here, so you know where you got to go. Get it on there. Like I said, I run it as tight as I could with my hand. And now I'm just going to ratchet it down so it stops and then give it a little, eh, you know, an eighth of a turn or so. And I feel pretty good about that. I mean, the main concern for the torque that you're putting on that bolt head is to get a seal so you don't leak any oil. So you'll know whether or not you tightened it enough by whether or not you're leaking any oil. It shouldn't need a ton. Uh, that's it, man. They're both in. I, I, I don't understand the difficulty and concern in doing this job. It's not bad at all. And, and just a great preventative measure because, uh, like I said before, if, if that chain... Uh, if it gets too loose, it gets flapping around in there and it breaks those guides that it moves along. Uh, that's the end. You can't do nothing from out here. You got to get inside the engine and that rear timing chain. Uh, you, you'd have to pull the engine out. It's not like a front chain where you can pull your front clip off and take all the front stuff off and the timing cover and get to it, which is a bitch too, but, but this is even worse. You got to get the transmission detached and all that. Um, you don't want to do that. Your timing components are very important. You know, for any of you that don't know, there's a there's pistons inside your engine. You look like this. This is your piston, your connecting rod, wrapped around a crankshaft. Up here, a whole lot needs to happen. Spark, fuel, air exhaust all happens right here at this moment and it all happens by means of that timing chain rotating components at specific times to make them all happen at the right time you know an, an electric pulse that creates a shock a shot of fuel whatever it, it all happens because of back air if that ain't right you're done so that's it man i'm gonna start it up wait for the chatter to go away and leave it at that Let's see what happens. I'll leave y'all on board for that. Before I start this up, I was running to go grab my keys, and I thought I might fill you in on a couple more things just to make sure you're safe. Uh, do not, and I repeat, do not. And if you got kids running around your car, it might do something stupid. Put the keys away somewhere, hide them, or disconnect your battery. Do not start this with one of those tensioners out or not run all the way in tight. Do not do it. Also, be sure to check your oil level. Like I said before, when it comes to your, uh, you know, what's important here, your oil filter flow, your oil level all needs to be good. And then also, we know about these, uh, these hood supports being weak on here. I got a breaker bar in there to hold my hood up because I didn't want my head crushed. But anyway, we're done. I'm going to start up the truck. Let's do that. Listen and see if there's a horrible chatter at first. There might be. And I left my camera stand up there. Let me get that down before I start it. That's another thing. When you start a car, make sure all the stuff is off of there or at least in a spot where it's not going to fall down into, you know, your engine bay area and tear anything up. I checked my oil level. Look, good thing I came out here and my stick's out. Not that it matters. I am, she is low on oil. Uh, about a half a quart. For my purposes, I've, I'm comfortable with it. But I would say make sure your oil level's good. Let's start her up. You hear that? And then quiet it down. Boom, just like that. Peace out. I hope I saved y'all some time and some headaches. Y'all be sure to subscribe, like, all that good shit. See ya.